This is an Ellis Mowers and More small engine repair. Stay connected on Instagram and Facebook at Ellis Mowers and More. Comments or questions? Leave them below or email me, ellis at ellismowers.com. Parts used in today's repair are found using the links in the description below. And as always, like and subscribe for more small engine content. On today's repair, we're going to work on this Lincoln Electric Ranger 8 welder generator. Um, customer had it. I think it's only got eight hours on it. I don't know if it means eight run hours or eight welding hours. I don't know how the hour meter clocks on this, but probably run hours. It's been sitting up a while. The guy said he's had it worked on a couple of times, so what's happened is um, he'll get it back and it'll run and then it'll act like it chokes out after a little while. So I'm suspecting that it's a fuel pump issue on this. Uh, the fuel pump itself is going to be easy. I just want to see if I can get it to run first off uh, because this thing has been sitting up for a little while. It got a decent amount of rust and corrosion and stuff right around where the carburetor is. So I'm afraid that the carburetor might be trashed on it even though he put a new one on a couple of years ago. We may have to find out uh, see how deep we have to get into this, but also uh, Just kind of go through everything we're gonna have to replace fuel lines. Hopefully the tank is in good shape Hopefully we don't have a lot of water and stuff in that uh, So I'll give you a look around here. I've already kind of started a little bit But nothing too much that y'all can't get caught up on to caught up to speed on so here we go You can see the rust and corrosion right here on this backing plate for the air filter. I've basically just taken the air filter off so far. So just a couple of wing nuts took the air filter off and then a couple of eight millimeters took the backing plate off. We took this little intake tube loose as well. I sprayed some WD-40 down here. We're doing our best to see if we can get throttle, the throttle freed up. We've gotten the choke freed up already, but the fuel pump on these actually lies on these Kohler Command V-Twins right here, right where the oil is as well, the oil dipstick. So, kind of an interesting, uh, interesting look here. Need to find where the oil dipstick is on this. I don't really run across these very much, but I can tell you, I can show you that we got the choke freed up, which is a good thing. So we've got that freed up. Now I need to get the throttle itself freed up down here. And hopefully I can do that somehow here. Uh, hopefully it's not screwed up inside there. I don't want this thing to be roaring when I crank it up. But I'm just going to kind of maybe tap it with a screwdriver or something along those lines to see if I can get it freed up, work it loose, and continue on. Um, oh, here's the dipstick. I'm looking right at it. Insert dipstick meme by mowers and blowers. Oil. Oil is full. It kind of does smell a little bit like gas, which would make me suspect that it has a fuel pump leak. So... I'm hoping that's all it is. I'm going to continue working on this to get everything free. If I can get everything free, I'll throw the battery back in. I've had it on the charger for a couple of days because it was at zero volts. And we'll see if we can get this thing started. All right, guys, I got everything freed up, thankfully. Choke. Choke's free, too. Y'all saw that already. We're going to put the... Batter oh, battery's on that side, too. Battery's back on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can at least prime it to get it started and run. I know the oil level is pretty good on it. And see what happens. If it'll pick up, that'll be awesome. If not, then we're probably going to have to go into the carburetor. Because, like I said, I don't know how long it's been run, but all that mess is rusted on the top there. So. Let's try, at least. Check. 
Try it one more time, and then we'll pull the fuel line. bunch of junk. I do want to see if the fuel line is priming. Let's see if I can take it off here. It's a bunch of junk going everywhere, ain't it? Woo. So we're not getting any fuel up here yet. So it's not priming up through the gas tank and I think we've got I think we've got a things in the gas tank here so One thing I could do to make sure that I have gas in the gas tank. It's a little bit messy, but I can take this off right here. Oh, maybe not because it's a uh, it comes out of the top of the tank. So I can test the fuel pump though. doesn't feel like it's pumping anything so I'm I'm willing to bet that I just need to go through the fuel system do the fuel pump at least and the fuel lines and see uh, what's gonna happen there not that big of a deal it's happened before I, oh yeah it happened so it happened on one of these Gravelys that I worked on back in the winter time where it was choking itself out and would barely run. I put a fuel pump on it. The thing ran like a top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and order a fuel pump for this. This is a Kohler. I'll link it in the description for y'all. This is a CH20S. I'm going to go ahead and buy a fuel pump for it. Get the uh, Get all the parts here. See if we can tear it down and knock it out and uh, see if that works when it comes to uh, fixing this. Because if we can get the fuel pump to pump gas, then we'll be in good shape. Based on what he told me, it was doing and based on what this engine looks like i think i could justify purchasing one i also want to mention underneath this cover right here holy moly there's a 
mouse nest to be had. So we might have to pull that out. This thing, man, I thought this thing wasn't sitting like it was, but it, it's been sitting a long time. So uh, we've got this going on here. This is kind of corroded and coming out. So uh, wow. We'll see. We'll see what we end up uh, finding when we continue to tear into this. I suppose. So we got the new part in. We're gonna go ahead and take everything off here. I am gonna put fuel lines on it. I do know it has gas in it. It's a little old, but it is. Uh, yeah, it's, it's gas. So, um, again, I don't know if this is actually the issue, but it's not pumping gas. The fuel lines are a little rotted, or a little bit old. I do know it has plenty, because when I pressurize the tank with my mouth at the, um, what would that be, where the uh, gas cap is, then that's what, uh, it worked out well. So... What we've got going on here let's take a look we might go we might as well go ahead and check valve clearances and stuff while we're in here as well it's just kind of weird because it's a whole one piece unit this thing it does run so we got that going uh, i can't really turn it but oh i think these may be the hydraulic valves because it's a kohler command I think they are actually they are because I can't I can't adjust them anywhere I don't think so we do know that it has compression on this side I think we checked that so I guess what all is left to do here is to slap this new one on I think we got the fuel line fittings and stuff too Ooh, we got a little bit of fuel line in here too that's great I'll leave this product in the, the description below. We're going to put it on. Do we have a gasket or anything? No. This, is, this ain't a gasket-free engine, is it? Well, we've got a little thin one right here. I might have to transfer that. Unless there's already one on it here. I don't see any, like, let me see. So there, I don't know if there's any truth to this. There's a lot of, like, so this is the old one. Really easy to push in. This one right here seems like it's got more resistance. So I'm thinking that the diaphragm went bad on that original one i think this is going to solve our problem if not it's at least going to get us close let's see what we got here we can put this on the right way the round side on the inside so that it fits in that little groove gasket is a little stretch but i think we can make this work I'm just going to slide it on here. Kind of a nifty little design. Uh, yeah, thin side up. And also kind of cool if this is what fixes it. I'm just going to use the old bolts unless the shoulders are different. Yeah, this is a different type of setup here, so I have to use some new bolts that are provided with the with the kit so that's good so That is the correct way. Let me get these bolts started here. They're eight millimeters. I 
This is the first for me, guys, so hope you are enjoying this. I don't know if I've ever worked on a horizontal Kohler Command Twin before. I've done a couple of those, a uh, couple of them Gravelys there last year. That were the Kohler Command Singles, the old school ones. Just gonna tighten these down carefully. this is plastic so I don't know why Kohler put made these plastic but I'm gonna get a socket real quick we're gonna tighten that down next thing I'm gonna do I'm gonna put these on Talking about plastic valve covers here, so you don't want to go too uh, hard in the paint on them. I think that's plenty, actually. Just nice and snug. I want to go too far. All right, so what we've got. A valve cover with fuel pump and all that good stuff. Uh, we're gonna match what we just did here. So this looks like, in terms of the fittings, comes with these plastic fittings. And what we're gonna do, one of them is a 90 degree, that's the one on the top. So we're gonna put that one in see if we can put it in here uh, well let me let me figure, sort all this out a little bit more either way we got the premise and I'll let you know how these go in so first off there is a valve cover gasket in here I'd rather use the old one the old one wasn't leaking and this one right here is all kind of curled up you may have a little bit more difficulty getting it correct uh, and getting it working on there we're gonna put this. So basically, it's just you just forcing it in here. Uh, nothing crazy. Making sure that the fuel nipples are the same on each side here. They are not actually. So we're going to put. Let's see. Let's see which ones we need. So we need the bigger ones. This one's a small one. So we're going to pull it back out, slowly but surely, there we go. So see that's a smaller one. We're going to get the bigger ones here. It's going to look a little weird, but... So we've got both the same size, I'm going to put 90s on. It's literally just kind of whittling it through there. And it's eventually going to lock in. Just like so. You hear that click? So it's locked in. This is not the ideal situation here with the bottom. But the top definitely wanted a uh, 90 degree. We're just kind of pushing it in here. I'm going to put it right there. I'm going to lock her in. Perfect. Now I'm just going to put some fuel lines and stuff on it. If we could actually try it with this, we might get lucky. Like I said, I am going to put some fuel lines on it, though. I do want to see. Alright, so we got it hooked up. Let's see if she pumps now. It'd be great if it does. Yeah. I just want to see some gas pump out of this thing and we'll be good after that hopefully. I 
see it coming up out in, in the fuel filter, so that's a good sign. I think, there we go. All right, so we're in good shape there. Like I said, I think I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and take care of these fuel lines and whatnot under here. And make sure that they're okay before we put it into here. We may prime it, let it fire up. But, we guys, we might be close. We really might be close, depending on how bad this carb is inside. And we might be so far away. I'm not sure. But, we did prove, and the field test that I just did a little bit ago helped me also prove that it was the fuel pump gone bad. So that's a plus. We got something that we had to fix fixed. We're going to put these fuel lines on and... Uh, get all that situated. I'll come back to y'all. We'll fire this thing back up again. Hopefully, it'll run good. All right, guys. New fuel line, new fuel filter. I put the little plastic guard under the fuel line down there. Connected it to the other side over here, which I think I showed y'all right there. I do know that we're getting fuel now. So the thing is, it's like, are we getting it? into the carburetor so we know the fuel delivery to the carburetor is now good how is it once we get to the carburetor itself we may be able to get lucky and take these four screws off or we might have to go in and do the whole shebang if this doesn't work i am going to give prime it up with a little bit with this carb spray start it up see if it'll pump any gas in there I'm hoping that I don't have to go into the car, but we'll see. <laughs> All right, so like I said, we do have a lot of junk. I confirm there's not a mouse nest under there. It's just a, just a little bit of junk in there. At least I do know we can double check. So we're getting gas going up through here, pumping hopefully into the cylinder here. I'm gonna try it one more time just to make sure that we're not having any issue, that it's a fuel delivery issue in the carburetor and not just pumping it in there. So here we go. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get into the carb on this thing, unfortunately, I think. Oh! That was a little prom- that was actually kind of promising. Let's- I think we're getting all the junk out of here, at least. I think we have a little bit of, I don't know if we have bad gas, we might have a little bit of water in it. I'm gonna keep uh, working on this, see if we can get it. It's really wanting to try to stay running. So if I can get it to where it will stay running, then we'll be in good shape. I think it's got a bunch of junk in there, like a bunch of junk. And if we can get that junk to where it'll kind of purge itself out of there, we may be all right. Throttle seems to be all right. So let me try it one more time on camera.
really, really wants to. Every time it gets a little bit better and a little bit better. Let's see what we can do here. Really, really wants to. All right. I might have to settle it and get into this thing. Hopefully, let me see. Let's see what we can do here. Re Man, it really wanted to. Let me turn this thing off. Don't run the hours up because it's only got eight hours on it. This carb, like I said, is fairly new. I feel like it's just got a bunch of junk in it. If we can get it out. So we might have something that we can work with. Oil level is good, so I do know that much. Yeah, we just got a, some varnish and stuff in here, guys. Hmm, let me see what I can do here. What we got underneath here? So that's the float and everything. Oh, the float's partially stuck, so that'll do it. So the float is partially stuck. So that'll cause some of our issues. Okay, this is an interesting setup. I don't know how well I'm gonna be able to show you all, but let's get in a little closer. Let's go in deep while we're here. So we're gonna take this off really carefully. I think we can get this float unstuck be in good shape. Oh, that spring, I think, is broken there. No, it didn't break. Might be ultrasonic, at least for the top half here. That's what's happening. It's not getting enough. It's not getting any gas through there. Really close, y'all. We're really close. I'm trying to show y'all in real time here if I can do this. Gotta be careful with that. Golly, I know if I put it in the ultrasonic, it would just come right back, I think. That's a little bit of a pain to take off, though. We got a, just junk and gel and stuff down here in the bottom. What can I do to get this off? Is it just these two? Eight millimeters? Possibly. And we can get this whole shebang off. If so, I'm just going to throw it in the ultrasonic. Because that'll be my best bet in order to get everything like it needs to be. Let's see here, guys. So I can take the fuel line off here. Learning as a go, guys. Learning as a go here. Let's see. Take the fuel line off. Also, like to show my work sometimes too, because sometimes I feel like I talk too much. 
A lot of y'all probably agree with that. We're gonna be really careful to try and get this. We need to get the fuel line off first. I just put it on, so it shouldn't be that hard. Oh, careful here. All right, we'll get the choke. All right, so we'll get the choke off. That'll help us get the fuel line off a little bit better. So that's great. We're at least getting gas up here. So I can see it pumping. Now what we can do is take off. Oh man. Okay. Biggest thing is getting that needle out. So let's see. What can we do here? I'm just thinking I can just throw this whole solenoid thing in the ultrasonic with me. I don't know if I want to do that. Let's just pull that off. We'll pull. This actually did work. I'll clean this up a little bit. Just it's just a ton of corrosion and stuff. Just gotta pull off the spring for the Let's see. I'm trying to pull this linkage off here. There we go. Got it. Now I'm pulling the spring off and we've got this carb off. So that's good. Um, golly. Ooh, hello. That's a lot of... Man, my hands are going to smell like old gas forever now. Uh... Just a bunch of junk up in this thing. Biggest thing is, needle's not letting gas through. So, ultrasonic cleaner, here we come. I'll show you the end results. Real quick, two things before I put this in the ultrasonic. There was a second screw holding on that uh, anti-backfire cylinder. I believe that's the anti-backfire on this. And also in here, it appears that we've got a jet uh, screw in here as well, like for the air fuel. With the spring so we'll keep all that together I've unscrewed that I'm double checking everything on every side here and it looks like that may be everything that we've got um, we've got this as well so your emulsion tube you can pull that out from there there's an o-ring on this side we'll put a new o-ring on it because the out one got stretched out I got most of the gel out of there what I do a lot of times is whenever I put these in the uh, ultrasonic I'll take this glass here and fill it up put these items in there so so I'll put that might as well put the, why not put the spring in there motion tube main thing goes main part of the carb goes into the ultrasonic and I'm going to put the float and all other associated parts in there. Throw the ultrasonic on. We'll see what it looks like when it comes out. Well, everything's out of the ultrasonic and good news, we've got the needle freed up. It is uh, doing its needling thing. So that's awesome. Now we get to put it all back together. Yay! Uh, so the best thing was to, well, this was the top, wasn't it? So the top had the float and stuff in it. I need to put the, it's been a couple of days, I'm not going to lie. I need to put the float and the needle back in it. One thing that you do not want to misplace is this little piece. 
I was at work and I was like, whoa, I hope I didn't misplace this. I didn't, luckily. So this is going to go kind of squeezed into, no, it's not. It's going to squeeze into this area right there. There's a little ring around the top of it that it's going to go into, and then it's going to go into the float here. Actually, this is a finite, uh, finite little job right here, guys. There it is. So, I'm gonna, you put the clip and the needle and stuff back on. I'm going to do that off camera. Show you how it goes. Finish putting everything else back together here in a second. So I'm sure somebody will chime in on this video, but this clip... Almost just like a little retaining clip, but once I put the float on, screw it down on the on this here, it kind of looks like it's doing what it needs to do. So, put some WD-40 in the hole to free that float up. So, hopefully, everything is good. It's not going to go that far down on this anyways. But now what we got to do is put in, put the jet back in. Which is going to be right here. No, it's not. It's going to be on the other side. That's what happens when you don't look at things for a couple of days, y'all. You forget where it goes. That is where it goes. Has to be. Just didn't push it far enough down in there. Just screw it in. We'll back it out if need be. I think these are supposed to go pretty much all the way in. We'll back it off just a little bit right there. So now we have an emulsion tube. I've got to put an O-ring on this. That emulsion tube. Goes in right here. I think it's right here. Or is it right here? I have to go back and check my work, y'all. Things actually right here. Because that's the main. Man, I'm screwing this all up, y'all. It's going to go beside the other tube here, or the other guide. So, honestly, we just need to shove it down in there once I get the right uh, O-ring for it. And we'll, then we'll just put it all back together. It's just a matter of putting everything back on at this point. Like that. And the four screws and you're done. Uh, put your sensor back on. So I'll go ahead and we'll put these four screws on. We'll get over to the machine hook everything back up so like I mentioned I just put these four bolts screws back in we're gonna put everything back on now uh, just gonna go what way is it gonna go it's gonna go this way hmm. 
And so we've got your throttle linkage going in, your throttle spring, and then we're going to see if we can get the choke in as well right here. All right, perfect. So now we'll mount everything. We'll plug back in our solenoid here. And then we have two eight millimeters. I'm gonna throw in here. Probably dump some fresh gas down and some sea foam down into the engine as well. All right, so eight millimeters. All the gaskets from what I could tell look good. That's moving. That was moving. Hopefully it was still is. Uh, and we can put the fuel line back. I'm going to top this thing off with some gas. Clip this on. Uh, and see if we can get this thing fired up. I hope we can. So I'm thinking that this might be stable in this fuel here. We'll see. Uh, I'm going to put it all back here. Might prime it with a little carb spray to get the fuel pump pumping a little bit faster. Or I might just see if it'll fire on its own. All right, so let's see. Full oil, let everything prime up on it, see what happens. Go ahead and put the air cleaner on it because it is shooting a little bit of debris and stuff out of there. It's just a small amount right there around the exhaust that's going to blow out. And look at this. Our gas has gotten clear. So it's just a little bit of junk there at the top, I guess. And we got it all situated. So that's awesome. Um, I'm going to clean up the air filter housing and all that good stuff. Put it all back on. We're going to test this thing. We're going to let it run for a little while to make sure that it's not flooding itself out, number one. And number two that um it runs good at that um at least the generator portion of everything works because uh, i don't think we had any welding issues or anything could could weld some stuff we'll see what we end up getting ourselves into so for the air filter you're going to push this emol uh this breather tube up through the hole put the housing on there's a couple of bolts and we'll put this piece on this holds on the air filter itself tighten them down make sure your gasket is underneath this 
Then we'll put the air filter on. Where are you? Oh, I put it on the wrong way. Hang tight, guys. Also, <laughs> this goes right here. How about, how about I just, you know, read the device so that I know what to do here. There we go. There's a little hole that that breather tube goes in. Tighten it all down. Now we put the air filter on. It should fit perfectly now. Excellent. A lot of rust and corrosion. I don't know where this thing was stored, but it's a good thing it wasn't stored for much longer than it was, because this might be a whole other story if, if so. Uh, and next... Now that that's tight, we'll put this uh, Kohler Command shroud on it, and that'll get us what we need in terms of this also. We'll screw it down, tighten it up. Of course, the fuel line is not going to cooperate with me here, but we'll make it. We'll make it cooperate. There we go. I'm going to turn that a little bit right there, so that it's not so much stress on this line. having to do this but it's one of those things you know it's your first time working on a particular engine you're going to make mistakes and you're going to learn from them luckily these are just little small things here but what we can do is just pop this off it should come right off and just spin it around just like that and all of our problems basically have been solved. So that's fantastic. And we got more room on the fuel line now. Perseverance, really. Just learn new things. Try it out. Should pump some gas here now. Just making sure it's all clipped in.
good news is running like a dream that's what we need to do might see about investigating charging issue with the battery i don't know if it's this uh, little voltage regulator or if, uh, it's going to be flywheel magnets because i think that happens a lot on these machines but as little as he uses it honestly he probably can just put it on a trickle charger or something right before he uses it and we'll be fine um runs great though so that's fantastic and uh that's what we're here to fix uh it's a fuel pump and a carb clean and we'll leave it there for this video so we're going to end part one of this video here uh i think we're gonna I think we're gonna have a part two um reason being is because the first uh it's running great and all that good stuff producing power that's good the thing is it's not charging the battery so um i'm gonna go through the process of that in part two pretty sure we've got a bad stator on this thing uh, and i'll walk you through all that um, if you're interested i think this is a fairly common problem with these Kohlers as well um, if it's not flywheel magnets, it's usually the stator or voltage regulator. This is probably going to be the stator based on the test that I've done. So we'll get into that in part two. But for part one, we got this thing running uh, pretty good. Uh, it's running great. I uh, just needed that fuel pump valve cover assembly. Valve cover's not leaking, so that's a plus. And we also have uh, ultrasonic clean the carburetor and... Uh, We've got it back going again, so that's super. Thank you all again for watching. Catch me on part two. We'll get this thing right in part two with it running good and charging the battery. Y'all take care. See you next on the next one.